and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. So we celebrate here our second Sunday of Easter, continuing this Easter octave, in fact, the celebration of Easter Sunday itself, preparing us for the rest of the Easter season. Divine Mercy Sunday. This encounter with the risen Christ, this encounter with the mercy transforming, transformative grace of God. So we bring then our prayers, our intentions. Call to mind those who have asked us to pray for them, and those most in need of our prayer this day. And brothers and sisters, we take a moment as we call to mind our sins to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Bringing the sick and those disturbed by unbelief. 
unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial song. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. It is all the best of us. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. He is all his A reading from the book of Revelations. I, John, your brother, who shared with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we had in Jesus found myself in the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in the spirit of and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, Write up this scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstand, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen, and what is happening, and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, 
We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the days were, doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As human beings, we have a habit of coming up with nicknames for people. And often we don't make the nicknames of their best qualities. We come up with other ways. Or, you know, one little thing can brand a person. We, I remember one stands out. We used to go to um, Illinois hockey games. Um, and they would play Friday night, Saturday night. The same team. So they kind of back-to-back -back games. And there was one week, I don't know why, but the other team, they had you know, blue cover, blue-colored um, jerseys. You know, like the hockey pants, uh, and one person for every reason had red pants. I don't know why. And so we came back the next night. What was everyone in the crowd changing about? Red pants. That was what they called it. Well, somebody had even bought a pair of red pants and would stand up along the side of the, you know, the crowd, you know, dancing, kind of, to highlight this one player you know, that had the red pants. Again, I don't know why, but that was what stuck. That one thing that was different, that one thing that, again, I'm sure was not his, you know, maybe he loved it that everybody remembered who he was, but it was not necessarily a positive sort of cheering against him there. But this, again, this tendency of human beings, we can pick up something, often maybe something, a mistake somebody makes or something, and that then becomes the nickname that they carry. Thomas, today in the Gospel, has the famous nickname, Doubting Thomas. <laughs> Doubting Thomas, because he was the one here uh, that did not believe, that for whatever reason wasn't there on that day of a meeting. We often mention, you know, we highlight that aspect of him rather than this great perfection of faith, my Lord and my God. That what did Thomas do after this? Thomas went to India, that he's buried in Chennai, India, that he brought the faith there, that later when Europeans went, you know, they found Christians there, a strong Christian community in in Italy, or sorry, in India, you know, that called back to the Apostle Thomas, you know, that the church there had um, begun with him, that he went out on this great uh, journey to the ends of the earth, so to speak, of, uh, you know, to leave behind even more what was familiar to him, what was uh, comfortable, what was safe for this great desire to share what it was that he had come to encounter, to share that he had discovered not just a good human being, but as he said, his Lord and God, this mercy and this grace. So today has many different nicknames throughout history. Uh, the second Sunday of Easter, the Octave Day, uh, the you know, Quasimodo Sunday or Whit Sunday, which could be their own homilies in terms of some of those nicknames. But the nickname that it has now is a positive one. <laughs> is a positive one, not just connecting again with the fault or doubting promise, but with divine mercy. Divine mercy Sunday. Christ encountering him in his doubt and showing mercy. That Christ presents to him his wounds, as a famous homily says, that Christ presents his wounds that will heal the wound of Thomas's doubt, and that Thomas's doubt then is offered to us to heal our own wound of doubt. That through Thomas's doubt, we may come to deeper faith. This invitation, this desire, you know, to uh, encounter, or to share what it is that they have encountered. That this is at the heart of the lived Christian experience. Our faith as Catholics is rooted in uh, not just the cross, but in the resurrection. You know, as the driving force and power and uh, life-giving spring of our faith. That the apostles gathered in this deep community of prayer. I like the section from our first reading. It says they gathered in Solomon's portico, and nobody else dared to pray with them. <laughs> that their prayer, their, their, their 
their death of, of faith was something that in some ways was intimidating. But that didn't mean that people stayed away or were afraid. It says that they brought many there. The work of that healing grace. You're that Christ appoints them to continue his work of healing. As the Father has sent me, he says, so I send you. So as he reads on them, he says, receive the Holy Spirit. The whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Who sins you retain are retained. So those kind of foundation words of what we call the sacrament of confession and reconciliation. This invitation for them to participate. That just as he went and called the apostles, he formed them and sent them out. So the apostles were to do the same. Again, Thomas doing this. Forming a community of faith you know, that lasted you know, the, the, over a thousand years you know, to the kind of the next encounter, Francis Xavier and others. We one time, uh, we were on vacation. Thomas, uh, his feast day, St. Thomas the Apostle, is July 3rd. We were on vacation up in uh, Upper Peninsula, Michigan, and we found a church called Francis Xavier, who was that, the next Vedic major in the 1500s, known as the Apostle of India. The priest was from India, and his name was Thomas. <laughs> and so he told this whole story of this, this, uh, this source of faith. That again, being able to build up others, that as Christ has built them up, as they have encountered his mercy and life, uh, they go out to continue to light those fires. You know, this Easter fire, this Easter fire that began as a bonfire in uh, outside the front of the church a week ago, a little less than a week ago, uh, last night, or sorry, the evening, the late evening of, of last Saturday, that this then was shared throughout the church with individual candles. You know, that that fire, that the fire of the, the resurrection, you know, represented in the Easter candle, shared with each one of us, that as the, the exalted said, that it doesn't dim the original flame. Unlike <laughs> money or something, that if I give money to others, I have less of it. Your know, fire is something that makes the other like itself, but it doesn't diminish the original source. That the life of Christ isn't diminished by sharing it, but that we come to be like Christ as we receive it. That this mercy is something that transforms, that encounters the wounds, to those wounds. Here, again, of course, the physical wounds of Christ. The, you can think of the, the mental or the spiritual wounds of, of doubt of the apostles or the others. The uh, different ways that woundedness can be, again, that might be something that is something that we have afflicted to others or that has been inflicted to us. Could be our relationship, just our own self, with others, with God. Could be something that was done on purpose, something done on accident, or just a misunderstanding where uh, feel a sense of wound where in fact maybe there was not one uh, intended in any way. That there's different things we can think of our life. And we can think, where is that place of maybe brokenness? But where is that place of a need for grace? To invite the Lord there. The, the Divine Mercy devotion has this particular phrase, Jesus, I trust in you. The image of divine mercy that St. Faustina um, spoke of, you know, uses the message, you know, Jesus, I trust in you. But this prayer has a great healing power. Jesus, I trust in St. Thomas, you know, the apostle. Jesus, I trust in you, my Lord and my God. You know, what is it that you're calling me to do? Where are you sending me? You're know, being invited to a mission that in some ways was more challenging, more unknown than the one of the other, you know, of many of the other apostles. Being sent out to this far distant land, you had a time when that was an even greater distance. That things seem closer nowadays. It's a lot easier to stay connected and to, to move around. But this, this brave setting forth, to get inspired Francis Xavier to go out. But I want to end with one other saint, Saint uh, Philip Neri, who Philip Neri lived at the same time as Francis Xavier, also felt this call, you know, to go out to the edges. But as he um, spoke with the spiritual director about this, uh, he was living in Rome and said, Rome is your India. In other words, you know, Philip Neri was called, you know, to bring that same fire of faith, that same creativity, that same love and, and trust in the gospel to where he was living, to the circumstances of those that, you know, he, he was connected with. So that as we ask the Lord, you know, Jesus, or when we, as we pray to the Lord, Jesus, I trust in you. You know, Jesus, I present to you here this place in my life that is wounded. Again, whether that's driving from ourself, from others, just maybe mere accident or unfortunate circumstances. Lord, I present this to you. 
that may really heal this wound. Not just to sweep under the rug, not just to ignore, but Lord, really heal what is broken or wounded within me. <coughs> Forgive, dear Lord, I seek your forgiveness for that great power of the sacrament of reconciliation, uh, this binding and loosing. Jesus and speaks of it, that key, in a different way in the book of Revelation. It says, I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. But Christ has this great power to set free. Again, that dignity. You know, how is it that we think of our own self? How is it that we name ourself? Maybe we see uh, that in a way like many of the nicknames that children or, like I said, or people come up with that, that highlight what is negative or highlight what is wounded or broken. But instead to see, you know, as Thomas did, as these other saints did, as the apostles, and all of those Christians throughout the ages, to see that title of Christian, yeah, of follower of Christ, a little Christ, to see that claim, that what it is that Christ has in the resurrection, he truly shares with us. That what it is that we uh, possess, who it is that we are, is truly founded in Christ. And Jesus, I trust you to live this, to live my life as if that is truly you know, the most important thing. Not to place those other, those other things that, again, that are often are, 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 uh, come from the challenges that we face. But instead to see who it is that we're called to be. And to say that, Lord, you know, where am I sent? You know, how is it that I'm being called not just to be a follower of Christ, but a co-worker with Christ? <coughs> being lifted up, being raised into that mission. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. He's saying this to each of us. He says this to us in our the sacraments that we receive. says to this in each time that we come to pray. So I send you. Lord, how, um, where do I present, my, you know, where is your mercy um, needed most in my life? And Lord, where is your call for me? How am I being sent? Uh, you know, what is that true name that I have in the gospel to be sent for the healing of the world? as we spoke last week, renewal of those baptismal promises, that yes to the Lord, as together we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who received from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord to be glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And the life of the world to come. Amen. In the spirit of faith, let us also raise our prayers of petition. For all who follow Jesus, especially those among us newly planted in the garden of the faithful, that they proclaim the gospel of the risen Christ with enthusiasm, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that God gives divine mercy come down upon it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who believe in the risen Christ without seeing him, that their daily lives reflect the radiant joy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially those soon to pass through death to new life, that their hearts be filled with peace and hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all who gathered at this table and font that they welcome and support newly baptized and received. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions written in our parish book, for those on our cancer quilt, for those who have served in the military, living and deceased, for vocations to the ordained and consecrated life, and for Connie Stabler, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of the Church here and throughout the world, let us pray the prayer of St. Anthony, St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God be you him the humbly pray, and do thou the Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, thrust him to hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who brought about the worlds to the souls. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we lift up our prayers. We ask that you hear and answer them according to your holy will. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn is number 388, Tell the Good News.
reigns, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, if your sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly and pray, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Deliver 
us, Lord, we pray from every graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant them peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. For another assignment. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, God, not worthy to be in the earth, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this vast sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I should be seated just a moment. Uh, this Sunday, with connection with Divine Mercy Sunday, our works of mercy, um, there's also a special collection for uh, Catholic charities, or envelopes available. Catholic charities in our area have been doing a lot of different new things. We have a new kind of regional coordinator, so I'd like to invite her forth, Angelica Tolliver, to say a few words of introduction. school auction will be on the 30th, so the day before, so on that Saturday night, we'll have our uh, school dinner auction. Tickets are still available, lots of um, ways to participate. Uh, more info in the bulletin, please, as you're able. Again, much appreciated all of the, the help um, in whatever way with that cost. We have a lot of different things coming up, so keep an eye on the bulletin. want to mention, we have the letters, more copies of the letters from Bishop Lou Tilka. Uh, we'll have a parish kind of study on that on May 7th. Um, just kind of really look and say, again, how do we continue that fire of the gospel and keep that um, alive in, in our mission? Last but not least, I want to mention that tomorrow we'll have a vicarious celebration for Divine Mercy Sunday at 2.30 at Holy Cross Parish. So if you like, we'll do um, have prayer, have confessions available, uh, adoration, different things to, for the Divine Mercy devotion tomorrow, 2.30 at Holy Cross. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia.